for, for those who doesn't know, how dangerous is snooze compared to smoking, would you say, in your scientific opinion? There is a very, very important difference in health risks. Uh, where would you put uh, snooze on, 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 on this scale, in, in your opinion? Somewhere here. And I think it's important to notice that uh, the estimated risk point is so much closer to the zero end. Where would you place, uh, for example, e-cigarettes? Uh, so basically, way down here, and so the estimated risk against smoking of e-cigarettes is at 5%, yeah. and the estimated risk of smoothness is, is about, it's estimated at about 2%. 2%. I will say this. Sweden has the lowest rate of daily smokers in Europe, as well as the lowest tobacco cost mortality rate. So what's your thoughts about the Swedish experience on Swedish snooze? The Swedish experience and, and more broadly the role of population level epidemiological data. So we absolutely took the Swedish experience into account because we had the ability to look at epi. that's geared towards information in addition to the entertainment side. And it became relevant once we started seeing submissions that we make sure that all voices are heard. So it's not an elitist filmmaker's perspective. While we definitely have opinions about craftsmanship and things of that sort, it's also very relevant that the information be shared. So this isn't a, a complete judgment of the way films are made, it's the stories and the information shared. So, you know, you can, Give us your insight into um, why, why did you choose this method of uh, storytelling, meaning you could have published a paper, you could have did a, a podcast. Why did you choose to do it this way? Uh, because I think it's quite pedagogical. And uh, looking at my colleague, The Point movie just before, also touching on the relative risks of different products. And as it happens, <laughs> uh, I had a lot of interviews with prominent scientists from all over the world. Uh, and I just used some of those old clips, sorry for the quality, but to make a point that there are alternatives. As mentioned in this documentary, e-cigarettes and snooze are great alternatives to people who are willing, who want to quit smoking. Well, no apology is necessary because um, the point was made and the information was delivered and I think that's the, the goal and you succeeded at that, right? Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, what do you have in store? What, how, how do you build off of this? Are you, do you have the filmmaking bug now or do you have other things that you want to 
share with the world and how do you see yourself using that in the future? I'd like to make a point for, we are a crowd, international crowd movement called hashtag EU Force News. We are fighting to end the snooze ban in the European Union. I was personally present at the trial about snooze where NNA UK uh, was a part. And hearing lawyers in front of the seven mightiest judges in the European Union saying that the reason why Sweden has, Swedish men have stopped smoking, only 5% smoke, is due to uh, paternity leave and Swedish men's healthy living style, uh, which, has, <laughs> which has no truth whatsoever. So all the scientific facts are forgotten. Um, coming back to um, uh, why I made this film and submitted it is to bring attention to Snooze, a 200 year old product, which, if you remember something from the video, has been concluded, uh, doesn't increase any risk at all for any, um, any sickness. This was concluded in the Global Burden of Disease Study that was published in The Lancet in 2017. I support vaping. I vape during Saturdays <laughs> because then I have a beer or a glass of wine and I enjoy my snooze along with some vaping. <laughs> Are there any questions that you can ask from the audience? Hands go up, that's awesome. Microphone will come to you and let us start to you. It's not so much a question as well as a comment. Um, you very, very, very lightly touched it yesterday, uh, in, the, in the film, and you talked about it yesterday. You said Snooze is actually a great product for those low income countries because Vaping devices are quite expensive, and nicotine e-liquids, you know, the cost of vaping is, is much higher um, than for snooze, and it's it's a much, um, I think, more achievable alternative in those lower in income countries where they don't have to buy those expensive devices, they don't have to rely on electricity, and I hope that if you make them like smoothly, we will touch on that a little bit more. Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, personally, I believe we need the full spectrum of just about anything in order to reach a billion lives in the next century. Snooze is affordable. And uh, I've had people from Latin America, Africa, now testing Snooze, wants more information on Snooze because these countries have tobacco farming, they have the labor, and machinery you can buy in India, in China, at quite reasonable prices. All they need is the technology that we can export from Sweden. How do you pasteurize, how do you reduce the nitrosamines in snooze tobacco to almost nothing? So I think we have in Sweden a gigantic Conscience uh, that could actually help the world. There were two more hands. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, what uh, audience did you have an audience in mind when you when you put this together? I mean, is it is it consumers outside of Sweden? Is it regulators? I mean, or or was it just something you were passionate about and you wanted to put something together? I would say yes to all those <laughs> questions. <laughs> I'm passionate about snooze. I'm a former smoker, and uh, there's been a lot of, uh, sir, uh, how do you say, science uh, checking out snooze for for 50 years, and uh, one of them is, was made by Dr. Lars Ramstrom, who appeared here, uh, concluding that 86 to 87 percent of Swedish made um, female snoozers are former smokers. And with regards to the gateway, 
which FDA and others also talk about, you know, gateway in smoking. Um, of these 87% uh, former smoking smooth users, one third of them uh, during this uh, scientific study, six years, actually quit snooze and all nicotine use. So it's a clear gateway out of tobacco, smoking, as well as nicotine. Um, thank you. I, I have to admit that when Mitch Zeller came on screen, I was tempted to throw something at him, but I resisted. Um, basically because I don't see his words, his good words in conferences backed up by actions when it comes to the decision-making process. Do you think that Mitch Zeller matches his positive words in conferences with actions uh, in relation to business? Um, this was my first and only time I had got the chance to put a question in public. This was at the Global Tobacco and Nicotine Forum in New York in September 2017. And uh, afterwards, when people had heard my question and his reply, I think just about uh, all the persons in the audience when there was coffee time came and shake my hand and said, we never heard that in public ever before about any THR product. So I'm, I'm quite proud of that one. Uh, I just wish that if FDA, if the European Union would just say on their website, there are a lot of difference in risks between different tobacco products, different products containing nicotine. I'm sure millions would quit smoking if they knew this. There's been surveys made even by the FDA saying, uh, Brad Rodo quoted it, uh, Professor Brad Rodo, uh, saying that FDA put the question, do you believe that smokeless tobacco could be less harmful than smoking? 11% of the US uh, survey persons answered yes, and it should have been 100%. This is, to me, back to basics. If we, can't, if we can have 50% of the world's population still believing that it's the nicotine that gives you cancers and kills you, we have to address that. And we also have to address when uh, harm advocates talk between each other. We talk in abbreviations and <laughs> fine word, FTCT, COP, and everyday man, they don't understand it. They just want to know, is it the nicotine or is it something else that is dangerous? Back to basics. Well, thank you. We appreciate you making this and sharing it with us. Oh, one more question. Just one, one question. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Samra from India. And uh, we have quite so many smokers, tobacco users, as we have smokers. And this is Asian SLT, which is deadly. Uh, unlike, you know, the perception of smokers in the West is that it's harm reduced. But that's not the case in India. Because of the additives and you know, other things like slate line, that they had. Um, they contribute to 80% of oral cancer in the world. So, I mean, it's a deadly product. Um, I could see SNOOS being a uh, harm reduction for smokeless tobacco users. But I don't see that uh, as an advertised goal for SNOOS or SNOOS harm reduction anywhere. Why do you think that is? Or another follow up question would be do you think there's research which shows this harm reduction? Uh. Could you repeat the last question? Is there research which shows harm reduction or the, the quick pathway for harmful uh, smokeless tobacco users to switch to snus? Um, I am not uh, an owner of a snus producing company. <laughs> so I guess they would have to answer this question because it, it would be very easy, I believe, to export the knowledge produced locally, Africa, India, you name it, and the products you mentioned in India, 
uh, many contain slate, lime, beetle nuts that, with a pH level of 13 that burns the way the gum. Uh, same thing in Sudan, Afghanistan, many countries. Um, it's not controlled really, it's all uh, what I guess locally made. And even some scientists mix them up. They talk about smokeless tobacco as if it was one product. And this is terribly wrong. So, um, anyway, I know what I want. I would like to see Swedish safer snooze technology all over the world as an affordable alternative. And like you said, some people can't even rely on having electricity. And um, smoking rates in Africa are going up. Why? The GNP, the gross national product, is increasing. And the first thing many people do is to get an expensive hobby, <laughs> lifestyle, start smoking. So I do believe uh, so many here, I think I met just yesterday, about 50 people asking me about snooze. Can I try a snooze? And got the point. <laughs> it was an intentional uh, play of words that the point was before. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Uh, we're going to go into our next round. Thank you so much. Dave.